What's up everyone? Welcome back to yet another review of Mass Fashion Week. Today, we are gonna be discussing five biggest shows from Milan Fashion Week. If I could describe this season in three words, they would be classic, wearable, and elegant. It was dominated by tailoring, super wearable staples, and other classic pieces. All right, let's jump right into the review and discuss it more detail. Following his debut women's wear collection last season, Gucci's new creative director, Sabado De Sarno, unveiled his first menswear collection for the Italian luxury fashion house. For his debut menswear collection, he decided to mirror his Gucci women's wear show from last September. Well, many designers exchange themes between men's and women's collection. Sabado De Sarno takes this approach even further. Each look in the mesh show corresponds with the one from the women's. Some outfits are the same or lightly reinterpreted, and others share colors or fabrics. Even the soundtrack and the concept of Gucci Ancora stay the same. Ancora is an Italian word and it means again. However, for the designer it's more personal. He explains that Ancora is not something that you lost. It's something that you still have, but you want more of it because it makes you happy. Anyways, his debut menswear collection moves the brand away from the maximalist silhouettes associated with his predecessor Alessandro Michele. Sabado's approach is rather minimal. He likes wearable designs accented with useful sentiment and romance. It was some way reminiscent of Tom Ford's era at Gucci, famous for its distinctive fusion of sexy and chic aesthetics. The primary emphasis in the collection was on tailoring. Gucci suits were predominantly styled in two tones. They were complemented by oversized versions of Gucci's signature Jackie handbag and short leather gloves. The attention to detail was evident throughout the collection. Suit lapels featured intarsia piping in matching colors to the shirts worn underneath. The designer categorized Gucci suits in two tailoring fits, one tight and rigid, very English, and another that's elegantly relaxed, more 90s. The outwear department was particularly diverse, ranging from floor-sweeping overcoats to chunky peacoats. Gucci outwear was complemented with silk scarves, fastened with the house archival snap hook closure. We had standout outwear such as floor-length python dusters and crystal fringe coats. More outwear options were introduced in the form of nylon bomber jackets in a striking deep lime green. In terms of colors, the collection was infused with a new signature hue, Gucci Rosso. Gucci Rosso is a deep and rich shade of Axe Blood, just a few shades darker than the middle stripe in Gucci's signature three stripe motif. There is a subtle modernity and freshness to the shade and turns out it works particularly well with leather. Sailor theme was spotted in the collection in the form of sailor knits with glittering sequins embroidered across the color. For the most part, the designer kept everything simple and super wearable. He said he didn't like cryptic messages and conceptualizing clothes. It's important to have a point of view, but everyone must be able to understand it, explained the designer. Certainly with Sabado de Sarno at the helm, the brand took a distinct and different direction. The shift naturally sparked discussions and reactions from both Gucci fans and other fashion enthusiasts. Critics say that collections seemed undercooked and too plain. Some even suggest that the brand may be on its way to become new Zara, Coast and Massimo Dutti. Regardless, we can agree that it's premature to make any kind of judgments. Sabado de Sarno is a new designer and like any other creative directors, he should be given time to hit his stride. Prada explored human nature in the recent menswear collection. Artistic co-directors Mucia Prada and Ralph Simons were curious how would corporate men look like if they were thrown into nature, so they examined two contrasting environments, the office and the outdoors. 
They explained that there is a deep and essential human need to connect with the world around us. The seasonal risk of nature and natural order determine gestures within garments. These clothes in turn reflect and react to their surroundings, to these contrasting and distinct environments, such as interior and exterior. The set design was created accordingly, juxtaposing an office interior with a natural landscape. There was even a stream flowing over rocks and leaves beneath the glass floor. Prada always cares about the image of the corporate man. This time, they are concerned with the image and the attire of the businessman, the working man, and the thinking man. Designers imagine dressing them into sharp, formal attire accented with neckties and textured swimming caps. These accessories introduced a tension between the corporate world and the great outdoors. Swimming caps were often paired with goggle-like glasses. Prada models looked like divers turning up on their first day in a new corporate job. Prada signature boxy suits were also iterated in a heavy textured version. They looked better suited for outdoors, especially in fall winter. Inspiration for leather slippers came from Ralph Simmons. He mentioned that he wears them when walking his dog first thing in the morning. In these moments, I really think in a different way about nature, said designer. Another way you can reconnect with nature is through diving inspired pants. They seamlessly harmonize with cozy turtlenecks and wide knitted leather belts, creating a proper nature-inspired ensemble. We had more clothes with a sense of the outdoors and the desire to go outside and to experience the world. Prada top coats and skinny raincoats captured this state of mind perfectly. Again, these looks were strictly elevated with the collection signature, swimming caps, and glasses. Certainly, accessories played a crucial role in the collection. Alongside swimming caps, balaclavas were introduced as another form of headwear. White waxed workwear jackets were elevated with a contrasting navy knitted balaclava. They added a proper outdoor sensibility to the collection. Headwear was further explored with retro inspired captain hats, making appearances alongside soft cardigans. The color palette used was truly exceptional, highlighting the beauty of nature that one might overlook by staying indoors and not embracing the outdoor experience. For more harsher outdoor experience, the collection introduced a proper winter staple, a double-breasted shilling great coat with a touch of military flair and those gleaming gold buttons. It looked like perfect attire for those aspiring to become a fancy ship captain. Towards the end of the show, Prada presented an intriguing double denim outfit built around high-waisted skinny pants. Could this mean that skinny pants might just be on their way back in? Well, I think the answer is probably yes. We might see a big comeback of skinny pants in the next few seasons. All right, back to the collection. It was minimalist, elegant, super wearable, and 100% Prada. The idea of the theme was inspired by the recent big developments in artificial reality. With this collection, designers reminded us that we have a beautiful nature and the world with seasons and weather, and we should experience this more often. On the critic side, many complained that the show did not deliver that rush of fashion one expects from Prada. Others say that Ralph Simmons kind of stagnated at Prada and that he was much more creative and expressive when he had his own Ralph Simmons label. Dolce & Gabbana has embarked on a new mission to distance itself as much as possible from maximalist and flashy collections. For the third consecutive season, the designers have been doing collections that are reduced and stripped of anything unnecessary, with a bigger focus on tailoring and contemporary fashion. Last season, designers were deeply preoccupied with preserving their legacy and the brand's core values. This commitment remains unchanged as designers continue to invest more effort and focus on clothing that truly matters. They call the new collection slick. It can be seen as a dialogue 
between the designers and their audience about timeless elegance and modern masculinity. The collection was strictly dominated by black. For the brand, the black color holds significant meaning. It's intense, graphic, and iconic. We had also a small segment of grays and creamy whites. They were used to add contrast and balance to the overall aesthetic. Such color palette is commonly associated with modern and minimalist design, providing a sleek and timeless appearance. The suits presented by the designers made a significant impression, especially those featuring Spencer jackets. Spencer jackets trace their fashion origins back to the Regent's era, specifically the early 19th century in Britain. Designers showcased more suits related to the British Regency era. Tailcoat suits are type of suits built around a tailcoat. It's a specific style with a tail at the back and with its front cut off at the waist. Bow ties and organs of flowers on flat evening shoes took the overall aesthetic to the next level of elegance and sophistication. All these references to the early 19th century fashion was confirmed by the designers during the interview. They said the sense of romance and old-school allure of the collection was inspired by aristocrats in the Visconti movie. They also mentioned the name of the actor Helmut Berger from the 70s movie Ludwig. Even though suits reigned supreme, the outwear department was equally stunning, ranging from trench coats and peacoats to elegant overcoats. Designers described it as pristine lines, expert tailoring, and authenticity. Absolute elegance was manifested through double-breasted coats with satin-covered buttons. The look was completed with a black velvet ascot and a maxi clutch. In this collection, designers delved into their archives, reintroducing a military-inspired overcoat. Specifically, they presented re-edition wool overcoats inspired by their 90s archive, featuring epaulets and branded metal buttons. More winter staples were introduced, including furs made out of fluffy shilling. We had also a wide selection of exotic pieces that added variety and certain flair to the collection. A lot of stunning looks were sent down the runway, one of those showcasing an exotic overcoat with leopard prints. The look was elegantly styled with silk pajamas and black slip-on shoes. A new emerging trend, riding boots, have found their way on the runway. This typically well-suited boots for equestrian activities has become a popular choice among many menswear designers. They can be incorporated into contemporary fashion to create versatile looks, including casual chic or a sophisticated city look. Once again, designers demonstrated their expertise that is grounded deeply in the traditions of classic Italian tailoring. The collection served as a bridge between old and new. It seamlessly connected traditions with contemporary fashion. It was like a melting pot of classic and modern elements that highlighted the ability of fashion to transcend time. It created timeless aesthetic that not only resonated well with heritage, but also held a captivating appeal for younger generations. Jonathan Anderson and his eponymous label, J.W. Anderson, was one of the most anticipated moments of Milan Fashion Week. Certainly, he is most famous for his innovative and arrogant approach to fashion. His collections are always rich with artistic and cultural references. They are often expressed through silhouettes, prints, and design elements. Turns out, Jonathan Anderson's favorite movie is Eyes Wide Shut by Stanley Kubrick. He thinks that it's a great Christmas movie, which he had pleasure to watch a few times last summer. That movie binge is responsible for the designer's inspiration that ultimately led to the show. Even though the collection contained neither Christmas trees nor masks, it included a few artworks by the legendary director's widow, Christine. She is in fact is a prolific painter behind all the artworks in Stanley Kubrick's movies including A Clockwork Orange and Eyes Wide Shut. These paintings were what inspired the floor-length cashmere dresses. 
Others featured a portrait of a family cat and a car interior. I thought what was interesting is the psychology of this idea of bringing someone from the background to the foreground, explained designer. That distinctive twist and kinda signature garment of the collection were sheer black stockings. Well, traditionally, feminine garments such as stockings were juxtaposed with casual and oversized sweatshirts. This contrasting effect created a bold and unique visuals. Once again, the designer challenged the traditional fashion norms by pushing boundaries and blurring gender lines. He staged what can be considered the first nearly entirely pantless men's show in Milan. Certainly, no pants going mainstream in menswear. Jonathan Anderson loves to turn the banal into the bold and the plain into the peculiar. This time he elevated cardigan a traditionally mundane garment. He did it by using details such as silky, puffed-off ruffles. Cardigan in this collection played a big part in the designer's exploration of intimacy. It can be worn pantless with stockings or alternatively with short shorts with similar puffed ruffles. Wearing pants is not an option in this collection. However, it's possible to throw on heavy overcoats or baggy trench coats to keep your legs warm. Color palette of the collection was rich and spicy. Jonathan Anderson used a lot of red throughout the collection, especially across knitwear and unique attire, again, nodding to the passion and sensuality at the heart of the collection. Red also had lined in an oversized velvet jacket. It was certainly a flowing parody of power formality and masculinity. Alright, the J.W. Anderson Fall Winter 24 collection was an effortless fusion of both menswear and womenswear. It examined the intimacy of clothing in a distinctly artistic way. The show proved once again that Jonathan is one of the most daring designers in fashion today. He has a rare ability to transform work of art and translate it into wearable garments. This time he added passion and intimacy into the equation, resulting in a daring and bold display of fashion. A theme of great outdoors and nature was of particular interest at Milan Fashion Week. As mentioned earlier, Prada focused on office versus nature. Fendi, on the other hand, tried to find a balance between the countryside charm and urban swagger. When Sylvia Fendi was asked backstage about show references, she answered that there was none. She mentioned that she prioritized functionality and the great classics that she constantly reviews and revisits. Certainly, Sylvia Fendi has the luxury of having the biggest and richest archives. However, turns out she is mostly focused on what today has to offer and does not like to delve in the past. Even though she did not explicitly confirm the existence of any particular themes, she considered that Anne, Princess Royal, has been a rather inspired figure. She is a confident woman whose elegance is dignified and emphasis, and I think she is divine, said Sylvia Fendi. Anne, Princess Royal, is a member of the British royal family, and she is the only sister of King Charles III. Indeed, if we observe closely, the collection has this town and country feel activated by images of the British outdoors. We had a lot of fisherman coats and waterproof wax jackets, cause the outdoors was channeled through Fendi twin sets and drop crotch Bermuda shorts. Scottish kilts were imagined as wide leg skirts with knife pleats on the out seams. They looked surprisingly chic, resembling formal version of kilts that you can wear in town. All these kilts and skirts hinted that the work of menswear designers is increasingly influenced by female figures. Sylvia Fendi clarified that not only does it underline the blending of the genders, it also brings about an attitude of liberation. She, as a woman designing menswear, is allergic to being pinned down by restrictive definitions. A collection is collection, period, explains the designer. Fendi skirts and skirts were accented by leather rain boots and hiking socks picking out from the top. This season, riding boots and rain boots reigned supreme. They are actually 
becoming a quite big trend this season. Alongside skirts, Fendi's Parama offerings included roomy corduroy pants. They captured that cozy and outdoorsy feel pretty well. The outwear department was pretty diverse and included field jackets, shilling coats, wool overcoats, and peacoats. Fendi peacoats were elevated with leather detailing from the brand's celery line. Outwear was indeed diverse. Some of them were made out of shredded washed denim and fringed mohair, looking like a real fur. The British outdoors with its picturesque landscapes and countryside charm has significantly influenced fashion, particularly through the iconic use of plaids. Sylvia Fendi captured this feeling well through beautiful plaid coats, skirts, and overshirts. Tailoring was not a big focus in this collection, for obvious reasons. Regardless, Fendi showcased roomy double-breasted suits. They struck a balance between casual and formal and captured town versus country feel pretty well. Alright, the collection was built around plush textures and rich forest colors. Nature-inspired color palettes served as a bridge that connected together various designs, components and elements, rendering them into a cohesive and harmonious collection. Fendi is all about accessories. The brand's new siesta bag made a debut in the collection. Turns out it can be flattened like a pillow. Other bags, such as Fendi Hobo, adopted Chrome FF hardware. Meanwhile, the pickup YCU returned along with soft trunk bucket bag. Turns out Fendi is a big fan of electronic music, which explained a few high-tech accessories in the show. An orb-like speaker was designed in collaboration with Fendi and high-end French audio firm Deviolet. Alright, this collection marked a smooth transition from the last season's high-functional and craft-oriented collection. Drawing inspiration from Princess Anne's timeless and outdoorsy style, Fendi aimed to capture a balanced town and country look that would seamlessly incorporate both urban and outdoorsy garments. The result was a well-executed collection, done with Fendi's usual elegance and classic craftsmanship. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.